886. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good afternoon. Now okay, with me is uh, Brother Ricardo Vélez. He just finished his college studies, so he's going to begin another stage in his uh, formation, which is what uh, Brother Elmer is doing right now, internship. But uh, he will be going to Hillsborough. Hillsborough, Hillsborough in Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, brother. <laughs> and today we celebrate Mary, the mother of the church. You know, beautiful title. And 2018, uh, Pope Francis decided to put it into the liturgical calendar for everybody in the whole church, in the whole world, to celebrate Mary as the mother of the church. You know, Mary has been in this way, he, he, she has been known in this way from, I mean, the very beginning of Christianity. But uh, it was added until a couple of years ago into the liturgical calendar and we honor her today we honor her giving thanks to god because it's one of the greatest means he has given to us in order to focus on christ to go to christ so let us prepare to celebrate this mass with gratitude but also with humility recognizing that uh, mary was always attentive to god's will sometimes we are not in this way and for the times we have uh, missed uh, to doing god's will we ask for forgiveness and strength I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I had failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray.
O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also, grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day and exalting in the holiness of her children. May draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to him and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm, Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. His foundation upon the holy mountains, the Lord loves. The gates of Zion, more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God, and of Zion they shall say, One and all were born here, and he who has established her is the Most High Lord. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. They shall note, when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born here, was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance. My home is within you. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. O joyful virgin who gave birth to the Lord, O blessed mother of the church, who nurture, who nurture in us the spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Mag the Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, and in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled, Jesus said, 
I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine and on a spring of a high soap and put it into the mouth, his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowed his head. He handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of the week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a wonderful thing to have a Mary as a mother because when we think of Mary as a mother, we see what is the perfection of a mother. You know, it's like a God the Father is the very true perfect image of a father, what a father is going to be or supposed to be. Caring, their, uh, sending everything, all whatever the father has in order to help their family, the children. But Mary is, is this way in terms of a motherhood. Mary uh, is the perfection of a mother. Mothers must have in Mary a perfect image how to be a mother. And, uh, and in, in today's reading speaks beautifully. In the first reading from the book of Genesis, you know, we see Eve, the mother of the whole humanity. It's at, the end, at the end of the reading it says about it. But when we reflect on Eve, we say, well, you know, Eve was not that quite a perfect woman, like we can say, you know. I mean, she let the serpent uh, make her to, to sin, you know, disobey God. And, uh, and she, she decided, because according to the scholars, it was not like uh, they were kind of naive and they ate the fruit. No, they were both, Adam and Eve, were both fully conscious of what, what they're doing. They wanted to be like us. So they decided to disobey. You know, but we use this, this reading uh, as, as an example, or as a contrast with Mary. Mary is known in the church as the new Eve. It's the new Eve. As Christ is the new Adam, Mary is the new Eve. So if, if, if Eve was disobedient, decided to do, to do her own way, Mary attached herself body, soul, all her being, will, all, all of her, to God's will. You know, for me, the Annunciation, the Annunciation is a, a beautiful, powerful passage about this. You know, she was there having this conversation with the angel. The angel told her, you will be the mother of God. The, you know, the angel does not say, would well, you like to be? You know, his, God, God has chosen you to be. God has prepared you from eternity to be the mother of God. Of his son, and then Mary did. Mary said, "Tell me how it's going to happen." You know, humanly speaking, it's impossible because I have not relationship with a man. But yes, let me know. What, what can I do? Pretty much, Mary said, "I'm ready for this." And, and, and it was not a naive answer either. Perfect obedience. Jesus saved us because he was obedient to God. And by obedience, he died on the cross because he was obedient. He died on the cross. And, he, uh, and when he died on the cross, Jesus saved us because of obedience. So Mary, the perfect image of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, yesterday we celebrated Pentecost. What is the, the, the work of the, of the Holy Spirit is to transform us into Christ. What the Holy Spirit did to Mary, the Holy Spirit wants to do with us to be transformed, that may our will be like that of God, like that of Christ, 
to obey. So Mary is a perfect obedience, a perfect obedient like Jesus, and he and she is our mother. Today's gospel, you know, today's gospel, imagine this, Jesus is on the cross. He is dying. He is saying the, the, the last very words of his life. And he turns to the disciple and to Mary. First to Mary. Mary, behold your son. And then to John, supposed to be John, the, the beloved disciple. Uh, behold your mother. And then John says, the one who wrote the, the gospel says, at that very moment, for that very moment, she took her into her home. What beautiful experiences had John having Mary at, at his home. You know, imagine all these dialogues, all this thinking, all this reflection about Jesus' death, about Jesus' life, about the obedience of Jesus, about... Imagine all this dialogue that John had with the Blessed Virgin Mary, all that Mary taught him you know, to be faithful until the end. I remember I saw a, a movie, uh, I think it, it was called Mary's Land, or the Land of Mary, something like that. And then it, it was precisely when uh, Jesus ascended into heaven and the disciples were having a lot of trouble in the church, many problems, persecutions, and Peter was in crisis, and every time they came to Mary, this is going on, this is, this is what's happening in, in, the, in the church right now. And, and, and Jesus, uh, Peter was kind of discouraged, and, and he went to, to talk to Mary, and Mary always brought Jesus into his life. Remember what my son said. Remember what my son did. Oh, Peter, you are in charge of this. You can do this. And, and Mary always gave them courage, helped them to understand better what Jesus did and said. Imagine, I mean, well, this is our mother. You know? We have a mother who is this. And, 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 uh, and, and, and she is present. No, she's not far away in heaven and, and, and looking at us from heaven. No, she's very present. And all, the, all these apparitions we have about Mary tells us about this. She is with us. In the difficult times of her church, Mary is with us. Pray. Sacrifice. Make sacrifices. Trust in God. And uh, I, I really like uh, our Lady Guadalupe message. You know, I really love it. You know, when she presents herself as a mother to, to San Juan Diego. I am not your mother here with you at this moment. You know, and this is, this is a, you know, this is a help of God in Mary. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, Mary as a mother. So I invite you today, you know, who is mother, who is Mary as a mother in your life, in your spirituality? There are people who have a lot of trouble uh, understanding this. Because sometimes there is a kind of a Protestant influence or whatever. And uh, but today, as we celebrate in the churches, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what does it mean for you to have Mary as a mother. And your personal prayer, take a, man, a minute, two minutes, five minutes, whatever, and, and, and reflect on, on this stuff. Because she is, really she is our mother. Amen. Amen. The Lord has promised to hear the prayers of the faithful to the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and faith. In faith, we lift our hearts and intentions to Him. For the Pilgrim Church on Earth, may God continue guiding us on our journey and our Mother Mary help us remain faithful to His Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For civil authorities, May God give them courage in all virtues, especially faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died in faith, especially those we remember in the Memorial Day, this Memorial Day. May Jesus, who defeated death, 
bring them to eternal joy in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For all mothers, especially for these prayers and the prayers you may have in your heart at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Gracious and compassionate Father, you provide so generously for your children. Please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your wisdom. We are this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn for the preparation of the altar is in our blue gather hymn. 893. 893. Mary, first among believers. We'll sing verse 1, 3, and 5. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept his sacrifice and the praise of the Lord by Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be salt set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. All those who by the, the death of Christ are born to heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the Spirit you had promised, she joined her, her supplication to the prayers of the disciples, and so became the part in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a few forms so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim to death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Come, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Gustavo our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. But with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Luke, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we turn to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gradually grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gradually grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion prayer song in the blue hymnal is number 102, <laughs> towards the front, 102, Holy is Your Name.
Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin's, Virgin's Mother help, your Church may teach all nations by proclaiming the Gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth. To Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, since today we are celebrating Memorial Day, I invite you to pray a Hail Mary for all those who have sacrificed themselves for the well-being of our nation, for us. So we pray, Hail Mary, Mary. full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sins, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. To honor those who have gone before us and given their life for, their, for our country. 984, 984, America the Beautiful.